Hello. Well, uh, today I'm here to talk about a movie that I wanted to talk about for quite some time. Uh, I meant to talk about this earlier in this series, but I just never really did. Um, so now I'm going to uh, just talk about uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, and that is Scarface, um, starring Al Pacino, of course, um, Michelle Pfeiffer, Stephen Bauer, so, is Mary Elizabeth Mastriano, uh, so many incredible, uh, actors and actresses in this film, um, written by Oliver Stone, directed by Brian De Palma, um, I know there's probably not going to be a whole lot, I can say that's, you know, really never been said before already, but this is a movie that is just an, an incredible film, uh, the performances, the story, you know, the classic rise from, you know, getting rich and then uh, having it all just fall apart. Um, that's something that happens quite often in films, and the gangster genre seems to really embody that very well. Um, uh, this film is also a... Uh, remake of a 1932 film, which I have seen and is also uh, very good. Um, in fact, this uh, set, and as far as I am aware, um, ever since the film's uh, DVD release in 2003, which been, would have been uh, the 20th anniversary of the film, 20 years, um, the 1932 film has been packaged with, uh, the 83 film, and this is in here, um, it's a DVD of its own, this is obviously a Blu-ray, but, um, it's interesting how they didn't put that on, uh, uh, on a, you know, a Blu-ray also, but, it's nice to have regardless. Uh, I remember the first time I saw this film, I was, uh, I was 12, yeah, I was 12 years old. Uh, this was before uh, I saw the first Godfather film. Obviously, I knew of Al Pacino. Um, I think I've seen, I saw some clips or stuff or moments of films with him before. Uh, but... Now, you know, I've seen a lot more of the films of Al Pacino and what he's been in, but of the two, what it would be considered his iconic performances, and, you know, as Michael Corleone and Tony Montana, I saw Tony Montana first. Um, saw it at a friend's house, uh, like his birthday, and he got that. He, it was, this was 2006, and he turned, uh, this was like late. He turned 13, and he got the movie on uh, DVD. Uh, this was his, this is his favorite film. Um, I believe it's still his favorite film. Um, haven't talked to him in a bit, but last I knew, that was his favorite movie, and he and we all watched it. Uh, hung out, spent the night at his place, and just talking and doing whatever. And, uh, yeah, we watched Scarface, and that was just really incredible. That was just fantastic. Um, I, I remember the chainsaw scene, and I'm like, wow. That was just very, that was just, I don't know, there was just something about watching it, the film, just at that sort of moment, and that, just have that happen, like, uh, you know, 
obviously violence had already happened, but that was like just very quite brutal. <laughs> um, and obviously it's very early on in the film. But, uh, and then the violence, you know, escalates from there. Obviously because, you know, the film has to do with drugs and the rise of power with cocaine, which, you know, back in the 1980s, uh, that was a big thing. The, uh, this, uh, this film really, uh, is a huge influence on so many, so many things. Um, a lot of rappers love this film and, in a way, see this as a, uh, sort of a morality tale in that, you know, you can achieve power, you can achieve greatness. But there is a limit as to that greatness as to once you obtain that power, you know, you gotta use it for good and not, you know, abuse it, not take it for granted and, you know, keep the friends you've had, you know, as friends don't, you know, basically screw anybody over. Um, this, uh, you know, speaks a lot to people. Um, but then again, that's sort of a message I think that a lot of people are very attuned to. Yet in the in the world of film, particularly of those like for gangster type films, um, drug films like drug dealers and like kingpins and all that, um, you know, some might not necessarily consider this to be a gangster film exactly, um, but. There are obvious elements to it, um, you know, but then again, it's, I think it's a bit more than a gangster film, sort of like Godfather, you know, that's more than just a gangster film, you know, sure on the surface it is, but, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot more to it, and, um, same here, um, it's a character study of, um, immigrant coming to the United States to, you know, get every, to try to live the American dream, and, you know, to an extent, Tony Montana does just that, but getting the American dream through the means of uh, illegal uh, activity of selling drugs and, you know, being a kingpin. Um, there's so much uh, in this film. Um, Oliver Stone obviously was the writer, said that this film actually helped him get off cocaine. Like, he was strongly addicted to cocaine in the 80s, and um, writing this film where cocaine has a quite a big role in the film, obviously. Um, he was able to kick that habit, so that helped uh, Oliver Stone quite a bit. Um, and this is just a fantastic film. Um, obviously, I do enjoy The Godfather more, though I think the experience I had watching it for the first time really uh, keeps this very close to me. It was just an incredible uh, uh, experience to, uh, being with friends and just watching this movie unfold and just being... <laughs> Cap and captured by uh, Al Pacino in his performance. Um, obviously, uh, as I said, this film has a lot of violence, and that was a big controversial uh, topic of the time of Baby 3. It was so violent, it was said to be incredibly, you know, just graphic. Um, and apparently, there's a story of Brian De Palma um, having to make cuts so the film could be rated. R and not be rated X, and apparently some of the stuff that he thought was completely stupid and dumb to just remove because it's like, why are you removing this? This is it's supposed to be very impactful, like for this film of, the, of moments of violence, but because of how I guess violent it was to be considered to the uh, MPAA. 
was forced to cut things back. And apparently, he had the original film reel of what was deemed the X-rated version. And once the film got an R rating, after so many cuts were done, Brian De Palma then made sure every copy that would, of the film that would go out to theaters would be the X-rated copy. And then I guess he you know, made many copies and then have all those distributed to, so, to every theater. So basically everybody saw the X-rated director's cut of Scarface with an R rating. Um, I've heard this very pl uh, many places. Um, it's also, I believe, on IMDb, though IMDb isn't always the most reliable place. You know, if you have a ca an account, sometimes you can just add stuff here and there. Um, but he does. He did. Um, but uh, I don't know. That's, there's just something about that story. I just. I, I think it's true. Um, there's just, just something about Brian De Palma that I could just see him doing that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but maybe it's not true. It could just be I want it to be true, so I've just, you know, <laughs> I, I've, I just kind of want it to be true so much that I've just convinced myself that that's what happened after seeing various places say that. Um, with critics, it was very divisive. Many critics hated the film because of the violence. Other critics loved it. Roger Ebert gave it four out of four stars. Said it was uh, just incredible, just like The Godfather. Like it was like a modern-day Godfather. Since The Godfather you know, took place in the 40s. You know, it's, you know. And um, it's... it's, it's it's obviously developed a cult following over the years. Um, it's also inspired uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, if you've ever played that game, the setting, obviously, Vice City is supposed to be Miami. And a lot of the things that happen in also like the mansion that Tommy Versetti gets near the end of the uh, film or the video game and other things are like just like Scarface very Scarface inspired and you know I enjoy that game quite a bit um, I also uh, and just, just just enjoy this film and how big and impactful this film is um, I think it would be quite easy to say Godfather was probably more influential um, but I think Scarface is just as influential, if, if uh, not equally influential, obviously. Um, it's so well known and talked about and beloved. It's really uh, it's a tale that uh, has been told many times. And the book of Scarf, and there's, it's also based off of a book, too. Um, and, uh, obviously in the 30s, you know, it was like a, you know, like a, this is like Al Capone, because, you know, Al Capone had a scar on his face. Nickname was Scarface. But things were changed enough, and also the main character in the original book and film was Italian. So uh, he climbs the ranks, high in the ranks of a uh, crime world, and is quite, you know, quite powerful. Um, and the film was just incredible. And this film is also incredible, and apparently there's going to be another version of this. There's going to be another remake. Um, two of the writers are the Coen brothers. I believe there's another writer or two. Um, I forget who's directing it offhand, because there's been many directors who have been attached and then drop out for 
various reasons, be it uh, uh, creative differences or just it's taking too long to make, and then they start to do something else. So perhaps just as things could have been getting going on the Scarface film, the director is now committed to another movie, so they can't do Scarface, and it's on hold again. Diego Luna uh, is said to be the lead. He's going to be the new Scarface. Uh, sort of sounds like he's gonna. It's going to be uh, Mexican in uh, I think Los Angeles. And that's how that's going to be. How that rise to power is going to play out. Um, obviously, you know. People say this film is a classic, which it is, and also the 80, or the 32 version is a classic too. Um, I also think this is an instance where a remake is better than the original. The original is incredible, and I hope to one day talk about that, um, but I do think the 83 version is a bit better. Um, I'm sure there's many others who just think who might think that the original is superior, while the 83 version is quite good. It seems one thing that's always consistent is Al Pacino is fantastic. A lot of people often debate which is his better performance, Michael Corleone or Tony Montana. I think Cor Michael Corleone, though I also like the Godfather films better, though I don't necessarily always believe the better film an actor is in is always their best performance, um, or even my favorite film of theirs, like you know, like Roy Scheider. I think uh, Jaws, you know, that's the best film he, he was ever in. It's my favorite film he was in, but I would think uh, I would say like all that jazz would be better, uh, a, a bit better performance. Though his performance as Chief Brody is incredible. Though with Al Pacino, I do think uh, Michael Corleone is his best performance. He really uh, got into that role, and he, and in those three films, he was really able to help flesh out the character each time he played that role. Though Tony Montana is an iconic character, and it's because of Pacino, it's because of him that he was able to truly. Just, just he was able to make that his own also, and bring life to it that no one else really could have. Um, and this is a incredible film. It's an iconic role, iconic film, and I'm sure that it's a lot of it is due to Pacino. Of course, so many other people, as I've mentioned, like various actors and actresses, were in it. Uh, direction of Brian De Palma and the writing of Al Oliver Stone and all so many other things with the music, with the original score and the just the '80s soundtrack, just everything just ma meshes well with each other. It all comes together, and um, it's a great film. Um, obviously, if you haven't seen it, uh, watch it. Though this film is a very popular film, and so you know, if you if you're watching this, you've probably already seen this movie, um, especially if you're a big film fan. But if on the off chance one hasn't, um, I would just say give it a watch. It's a great movie. Um, Al Pacino gives an incredible performance, and I think he deserved an Academy Award nomination if not the actual Oscar. Though, I guess because of the controversy, he didn't get nominated uh, due to the violence. And I think that's a real shame. Uh, I think, if anything, he should have been nominated. If it couldn't get nominated for like other categories like supporting actor, supporting actress, screenplay, director, and all that probably wouldn't have been nominated for Best Director or Best Picture, but I think at least the acting, maybe even the writing, 
and music, things like that could have all um, at least been a good uh, contenders for nominations at the very least. Uh, but I guess, you know, as time goes on, people are like, this is a, an incredible film and deserved a lot more praise than it got it back in 83. But, you know, the film is beloved by so many people, myself included, obviously. Um, and I just uh, wanted to share uh, my uh, enjoyment of this film. And also my sort of first, my basic, my, my first experience with this movie. Uh, and with that, I really have nothing else to say. Um, yesterday was Christopher Nolan's birthday. Um, so, uh, obviously I don't believe he will ever see this, but he, uh, I'm pretty sure he turned 50, uh, yesterday. So, uh, happy birthday to him, and, uh, watch Scarface if you've never watched it before, and if you have, what do you think? Do you enjoy this film? Is it one of your favorite films? Do you like it at all? Do you not like it? Why don't you like it if you... You know, dislike it? Is it because of the violence? Is it because of the language? This is also the first uh, uh, the first film to have the F word said over 200 times. Um, perhaps that also was a big problem for many people. Violence aside, that was just, like, just too vulgar. And also they use other explicitives, uh, obviously. Some which might offend some people, but um, that's the nature of the film it also just has a very natural way with the dialogue so even with uh certain words being said that would be seen as very controversial or well, maybe not necessarily controversial but uh offensive it feels very natural and it's like well i can completely see why that was said here it just fits it would be something that seems like something that would be said at a in a moment like that. Uh, so, yeah. Hope you all have a great day. Have a great weekend and a great week. And I'll see you all next time.